Hello friends, welcome to the Engineering Funder family. In this video, I will explain end-to-end -end IoT architecture to you. So here, I will explain to you how end-to-end -end communication happens in IoT architecture. In this video, I will explain how an IoT system handles data storage, data processing, data monitoring, and data management. Along with that, I will also talk about the entire IoT structure. Let's begin this session with the first point, elements of IoT architecture. IoT stands for Internet of Things. That's why the term IoT starts with things. What does things mean? Things means that there will be devices here that function as nodes. These devices will include sensors, actuators, and smart devices. Sensors are used to detect physical entities such as temperature, moisture, and sound. Here, various physical entities can be sensed. Based on sensing physical data, we provide a response. To provide a response, we have actuators. Actuators can include motors, valves, and LEDs. We use various actuators to provide a physical response from the system. You can say that things are embedded systems which contain microcontrollers or microprocessors that are interfaced with sensors and actuators, right? Now, whatever data we sense from the sensors is sent to the next part, which is called the gateway. Let's try to understand how the gateway works here. The gateway will interact between the thing and the cloud. Observe here, we have the gateway. This gateway will interact with both the thing and the cloud. So the next part will be the cloud. As you will see, actually, the gateway also provides some functionalities. When the gateway receives real-time data from the sensor, there will be a large amount of data. With this data, the gateway will perform pre-processing and data filtering. There may also be a bit of additional processing. On this basis, we can achieve a reduction in the size of the data. So here, the data forwarded to the cloud by the gateway will be somewhat smaller in size compared to the data given to the gateway by the sensors. The gateway will perform one more function. It will send commands to the actuator. Based on the commands given to the actuator by the gateway, the actuator will provide a physical response. The next block is the cloud gateway. You can see here that these gateways are connected to the cloud gateway. This cloud gateway provides interaction between the gateway and the IoT server. So there will be an IoT server which we will interface using the cloud gateway to take data from sensors. You should understand some basic functionalities of the cloud gateway. The cloud gateway provides data compression. It is essential. You should know that sensors will be sensing real-time data. That's why the size of the data will be very large. If you provide data compression, you will need less storage space. So the cloud gateway also provides data compression. Second, you need to understand one more thing. This cloud gateway can be easily connected to a variety of gateways. There can be multiple gateways here. Different gateways may use different communication protocols. So compatibility is necessary here. And that compatibility will be provided by the cloud gateway. The next block is the streaming data processor. You can observe here that this cloud gateway sends the data to the streaming data processor. The streaming data processor ensures that the data exchange between the cloud gateway and the control applications, as well as between the cloud gateway and the data lake, it is very essential. The data lake will store the data in its natural form. Or you could say that whatever data we store in the data lake is raw data. So the streaming data processor exchanges information from the cloud gateway to the data lake and the sense data will be forwarded to the control applications in real time. Now let's try to understand the next block, big data warehouse. 
you can see here that we have a large data warehouse that will take input from the data lake. If you observe the combination of colors, you will find that there is a structured data storage in Big Data Warehouse. Before storing data inside the Big Data Warehouse, it performs data filtering and processing. After this, the data stored inside the Big Data Warehouse is structured and this Big Data Warehouse can provide data to control applications in a structured manner. Based on the commands given by the control application, this Big Data Warehouse will provide meaningful insights for the given application. Therefore, the Big Data Warehouse plays a crucial role in making data accessible to control applications, right? Now, let's try to understand the next block, data analytics. Here, you can observe that data analytics will take data from the big data warehouse. Based on this data, it will accurately identify current trends. By observing and analyzing charts and algorithms, it will identify current trends in the given data. On this basis, it can optimize the applications. The job of data analytics is to provide meaningful insights for a given application. That's why, based on charts and patterns, it will identify meaningful insights for the given application. Now, let's try to understand the next block, which could be machine learning, deep learning, or artificial intelligence. You can observe that I have introduced machine learning here. This could also be artificial intelligence or deep learning. With algorithms in machine learning, we can provide certain models. Through these models or algorithms, we can optimize our application. These models can be updated over time. So by using machine learning, we can make our automation very efficient for any given application. There can be many such algorithms available through which we can optimize our application. Here, I have created a block for machine learning, but it could also be artificial intelligence or deep learning. Now, I will explain the job of the control application. If you observe, we have a control application here. This control application will give commands to the actuators here. But how will it give these commands? These commands will be given based on the programs that we have stored inside these control applications. You can observe that these control applications will take inputs from real-time sensor data. They can also take these inputs from this big data warehouse. Additionally, they can also take inputs from high-end technologies like machine learning, artificial intelligence, or deep learning. Based on these inputs, it will decide certain parameters with the help of algorithms and programs and will send commands to the actuators. On the basis of those commands, our IoT application will provide a physical response. Now let's try to understand the next block, device administration. You can observe that we have a device administration block which can include a web application or a mobile application. You should know, my dear students, that here you can easily perform user login or network admin login with device administration. With device administration, one can have manual control of the application or it can also be automated control. It depends on the user or admin how the control of the application is given or how it is decided to give control of the application. Now let's try to understand the next block, user administration. Ultimately, it is the user who will use the application. Here you can observe that we have a user admin who interfaces with the device admin. This user admin can provide signals to the control application. There can be two types of controls in the user admin. These can be manual control or they can also be automatic control. You should know, my dear students, that in manual control here, the user can also send signals to the actuators. If the user provides manual signals in this control application, those signals will also be sent to the actuators. 
so manual control is possible and users can also access the application automatically. This automation will be carried out here using the entire block. Now let's discuss the last part of the IoT architecture, security monitoring. You can see that I have listed security monitoring here. Security monitoring is very essential in an IoT system. Why? Because all the data is uploaded to the internet so anyone can access it. It is highly essential that security monitoring is provided with any IoT application and from time to time we should update our security concerns. There are major challenges in terms of security throughout the entire IoT structure. As technological advancements are taking place, many industries are upgrading themselves over time. Similarly, a complete end-to-end -end architecture is structured for IoT. I hope you liked this video and that the information provided in it has been useful for you. Thank you for watching this video.